tacos, burritos, quesadillas. What we know as Mexican food is only a small part of one of the world's great cuisines. It's vibrant, delicious and fun. Join our food safari to learn the secrets of making a classic mole. How to tell a taco from a burrito from a quesadilla. The perfect guacamole and salsa. And two ingredients that make a delicious marinade for the barbecue. Mexico, wow, well, you've got all kinds of chilies and you've got beans and there's garlic and there's spices. It is a world-class cuisine that you could spend many years exploring and not be done with. See Rafael, oh, Rafael. Rafael Nazario has written extensively on Mexican cuisine, worked as a chef in Mexico for many years, and has now opened Australia's first taqueria, which he says will change people's minds about what constitutes Mexican food. Rafael, if I'm starting a Mexican pantry, what do I need? You need, for example, tomatillo. Tomatillo is actually, it, it looks like it says tomato, and a lot of people think it's a relative of tomato because it looks like a green tomato. Mm. But in fact, it's a member of the gooseberry family. They're very, very tart, essential. Can't do Mexican food without tomatillos. Used in salsas, used to cook stews, used to make anything green, it usually has tomatillo and coriander in it. So then we come to the beans. The most two common types are the pinto and the black bean. Mm. Okay, these are known here as black turtle beans. This is what they make refried beans with. Here's what, something that's very common all over Mexico: nopales. These are called nopalitos because they've been cut into strips. Nopal is cactus, and they can grill them. You can make a cactus salsa. It's very, very good for you. It's uh, it's considered very, very healthy. And what's a cactus taste like? It tastes like aloe vera. Huitlacoche is a type of fungus that attacks corn. Mm. It starts growing out of the side in this sort of black, you know. Wow. It looks weird. It but looks, it tastes great. Oh, huh? It tastes great. It has a very, very unique flavor. Very delicious. Wow. Pozole. The reason it says maiz blanco means white corn, mm. hominy is a type of corn. Mm. And the corn is put in a lime solution that makes it puff up. And then it gets stewed, and that becomes a dish called pozole and it's, uh, pozole is a ritual. It is akin to going to a Vietnamese restaurant and having pho. Flavored chocolate is very common in Mexico. This has cinnamon, almond, clove. You can make a uh, hot cocoa mm. with it. Sometimes it'll mix it with cocoa. Yeah. In that. yeah, it doesn't smell like straight up chocolate, no. does it? No. This is anacho, and anacho is achiote in Spanish, and it grows in trees. You know, it's a little red seed, and it was originally used also to paint to dye cloth, mm. it dyes the food. It's also known as pormen saffron. Is this just coloring or is it flavoring? No, it's flavoring and coloring. Oh, that looks and great. Without, I can't imagine cooking without it. A natto paste makes the simplest marinade for the barbecue for a range of meats and fish. Mari Carmen Aguilera is a huge fan. You just crumble with your hands, just a little bit, yes. And we're gonna have the lime squeezer. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, and it's a very good size as well. Yeah, yeah. So we're just gonna have an orange. The natto gives you this color. It's very similar to the tandoori chicken. It is, isn't yes. it? The flavor is like very earthy mm. and um, it's not spicy at all. And basically, we're just gonna prick the chicken all around. So observe the marinade. This time we're gonna marinate it maybe around three hours. The best is to have banana leaves. If we don't have banana leaves, we just <laughs> use uh, foil paper. So and that's that. good. Yes. So we're just gonna put a little bit here and a little bit of the paste. <laughs> yes, a little bit here. Just enough just to cover them. Murray Carmen sautés slices of onion and tomato in some olive oil until they're just soft, then spoons a small amount onto each piece of chicken. 
So you get a complete pack when you open just it, do you? a complete pack. Yeah. And we just regrab them again. We also use the same uh, sauce, uh, the same mm. achiote, to mm. marinate it, the prawns as well. Yes, okay, so we're just gonna put it a little bit. And we just leave the chicken maybe just for maybe 20 minutes, just that it starts to um, get in all the flavors. The prawns are cooked on the hot plate with a little olive oil for just a couple of minutes on each side. For the chicken, Mara Carmen makes a simple relish of sliced onion, olive oil and vinegar, a splash of orange juice, dried oregano and sea salt. This is spooned on top of the chicken and served in a corn tortilla. I'm just going to put it here. And of course, we can slice it a little bit. This is your plate, Mabel. So. Wow, <laughs> so. am I serving it? Wow, yeah, that's serving fantastic. Yet, so. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. All in one. All in one, so. <laughs> this is not what Australians think Mexican food is. No. And it's so good. Lots of flavour. And yes, and it's very, very healthy, very fresh, basically. Yeah, and no washing up either. No washing up. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you. How important are chilies to Mexican food? Oh, chilies are essentially the, the main building block to, to flavour the foods. And the history of drying the chilies started with the Aztecs, the Nahuatli. They would dry them to preserve them. This is an ancho, which when it's fresh, it's green. It looks like a, like a giant um, capsicum, like a mm. green capsicum, uh, albeit more pointed. They're called poblanos when they're fresh. Okay, so they each have a different name, fresh and dried. Right, this is an ancho dried, poblano, fresh. If I were to use this in a dish, I would destem it, right? And we take the seeds out, okay? They tend to burn rather quickly, uh -huh. right? And this I would put in a little bit of hot oil, and it puffs up and changes color the heat of the oil releases the capsaicinoids. Mm. Capsaicinoids is the chemical that creates the tingling sensation mm. called heat. Then you start using it. Usually with a dry chili, they have to be simmered in hot water for a good 10 minutes, and then they're malleable enough where you can cut them, puree them, dice them however you are. This one's a guajillo. This is a really fun chili because I love the color it takes on when it's put into the oil. This is a pasilla. And they have, again, a different flavor. They have a more angular, more pronounced, uh, they're a little hotter. This is a, a chipotle, a dried chipotle. jalapeno, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And now these, for example, we combine it with a tomatillo, and we make a tomatillo salsa that has a, a smoky flavor to it because of the chili. Uh, in Oaxaca, this doesn't smell like it's gonna bite you. Oh, it's gonna bite you. Oh, this one is. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Jamaica. Jamaica is hibiscus on that part of the world, and here it's called wild rosella, I think it is. Oh yes, rosella flowers, there yeah. There you go. And it's the national cold tea, as it were. Very high in vitamin C. Wow, so it's got a sort of tropical flavor? It's got sort of a berry, well, hibiscus. Think mm. of a hibiscus iced tea, and that's exactly what it tastes like. That's nice. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mm. Great with vodka. <laughs> Well, here we have the ubiquitous jalapeno. These are, these are rather large as jalapenos go, but uh, this is probably the most commonly found uh, chili in Mexican food. Over here we have habaneros, and habaneros are super, super hot and should be used judiciously. You can always test a, an avocado by its firmness. This one's ready, for example. Mm -hmm. You try that. Yep. Feel how it gives a bit, mm -hmm. you know? And you want to always hold them in your hand and, and not just press with, with two fingers, but rather you palm it. And we have here, this is known as the reed avocado in Australia. But I happen to love the reed avocado. It's, it's a bit, it's larger, it's very meaty. They have a fabulous, fabulous texture, very high in oil, Wow. you know? And so they're easy to work with, sometimes much easier than a haz. And lime you mentioned? Lime, absolutely. Without, without lime, you can't make guacamole. Mm. But lime is everywhere. This is called the jicama. And jicama is a sort of a crunchy, almost like an Asian pear yeah. in flavor. Yeah. And the most commonly found recipe for jicama is like a salad, again, with a little lime, a little chili, served in strips or in batonet. 
delicious stuff. Mm. Coriander, mm. known as cilantro over there. And coriander is just about everywhere. Beans, salsas, stews. If you can only do with one herb, I would say do that one. Mexican side dishes add sparkle, texture, and a depth of flavor to a range of famous dishes. And the best known is also the one most mucked around with by non-Mexicans. No sour cream, no mayonnaise, or no cream. Lupita oh. Faint grew up with the tang of lime in the air as her mother made guacamole almost every day. Bring them out. Yeah. And then we just pour them out here. And would you make guacamole just before you serve it? Yes, you do. It's the best way to have it. Uh -huh. The chilli is really optional. We get the coriander now. I cut some Spanish onion before. Put a bit of that there. They're actually smashing quite easy. Just gonna put the tomato there. With the lime, it's just a little squirt. Now with the salt, depends on how much yeah. you like the salt, and está listo. That's a true Mexican guacamole. That's right. A good tip to keep the beautiful green colour is to place an avocado seed with the guacamole. And then salsa. No dish is served without some form of salsa, whether it's eggs for breakfast or tacos or dinner. So you can make the food hotter or tastier. So salsa basically means sauce. Yes. We just got in the tomatoes again into, into little squares. You don't get little, big chunks, just little chunks. Depends how hot you want the salsa. So let's put the whole um, chili in. Now we're going to cut the coriander. Just going to pour it over here. Now we're going to put some Spanish onion mm -hmm. and some salt. And yeah, now you have your salsa. Smells fantastic. You can actually just use it as a dip as well. Mm. Wow. It is hot. <laughs> it is hot, but wow. Twice a week at dawn, Mari Carmen, her husband Raymond and employee George fire up their imported tortilla maker to roll out tortillas for restaurants and the expatriate Mexican community. How important are tortillas to Mexican cooking? No tortillas, no cooking. Really? It's all about this, it really is. This is the centerpiece of every meal, including breakfast. So, so what's in this? Corn and water. Just ground corn and water? Ground corn, it's the original flatbread of Mexico. It is so and it's nice. so nutritious yeah. and so beautiful. But not everyone believes in mechanisation. Many Mexicans in Australia have had to make their own for many years, That's including really nice. Lupita de Palma. It has to go a little bit brown on one side and then the last turn then it's supposed to rise. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, look, that's right. That, you're happy but with it that should one. rise like that. <laughs> oh, that smells so nice. It's ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. For Gina Castaneda, tortillas are the basis of her favourite fast soup. We're first going to roast a couple of tomatoes, one garlic, then maybe half an onion. And um, you toast uh, chile ancho or chile pasilla. I usually just do it over the flame. I think it gives it a bit better flavor. And then I'm gonna soak them in a bit of boiling water just to soften it a bit. So I'll just um, cut it open and take out all the seeds. So we'll just fry that for a bit, cook it for a little bit. You have the chicken stock and we add this to it. It's 
So these are the corn tortillas. A bit extra tortilla, put a bit of onion, a bit of the cheese. The best substitute would be a feta cheese. The avocado, put a bit of the uh, cream on it. Mm -hmm. And just a squirt of uh, lime juice. Mm -hmm. And of course, a bit more chili. Those who like chili. And that's your tortilla soup. Fantastic. Other Mexican traditional dishes aren't quite so quick. Tamales can take hours. Sarah Chiswell mixes corn masa with lard to make these adored snacks. Yep. Ah, now it's me. If it goes to the bottom, it's not ready yet. It has to float? Yes, it has to float. Are there superstitions attached to making tamales? Yes, yes. No pregnant women should be around. Oh, OK. <laughs> I think we're OK on that front. <laughs> It's loud in a Mexican yeah. kitchen. <laughs> the chicken filling is made by making a rich sauce with ancho chilies. This is cooked and then mixed with shredded chicken. Nombre por la nariz. The corn masa is smeared over corn husks. Then a spoonful of the chili chicken filling, the parcel folded and ready for steaming, which for this amount takes the best part of an hour. Yeah. Wow, these look beautiful. Yeah, look at this one. So nice how many right. do people eat at one time? Many. Five, six. Okay, now we've finished. Mm -hmm. We covered them with the leftover leaves. So we just put this on the top. Mm. The result? The best comfort food south of the border. What a mole is because a lot of Australians know the name but they don't know what mole it is. Mole means sauce. Guacamole, avocado sauce. Mole in Mexican cuisine is traditionally a sauce thickened with nuts as a general rule. Moles are one of the well-known dishes and some of the more complex moles can have 200 ingredients. Kimberly Chiswell has one with a lot less. We've got here pork. It's a kilo of pork that we've chopped up into pieces to off the bone. And mm -hmm. It's boiled with a bay leaf and a chunk of onion, mm -hmm. just to give it a bit of flavour. Three tablespoons of sesame seeds. So these seeds will give a really earthy flavour. They're starting to brown. And that's 50 grams of our almonds. Pumpkin seeds. Pork stock. So that fries up a little bit? Yeah, you're just cooking the, the seeds. So we've got shallots, garlic. These are the tomatillos. Capsicum, just seeded. Green chilies, bunch of coriander and then come in two cups of the pork stock. Okay. And look at that green. That looks so good. So colourful, so Mexican. That's taken you only a couple, few minutes, so. Yeah. I'll put the meat in now mm. and then just let it simmer for five minutes. That's great. So that's sort of Mexico's equivalent of like a green curry. Yeah, yeah. I think it's better. Tacos are a corn tortilla, beans, meat, salsa. Now, the corn tortilla is a soft corn tortilla. Not a hard, Not a hard shell? One. A soft one, like these right here. Uh-huh. See? Not this business where it goes flat. If they're not quite as soft, you could put them on the grill, mm -hmm. like that. 
So that just warms them through. And warms them right up, off. starts to steam. This is chicken Guerrero. It's been marinated with guajillo chili. Okay. So we're gonna slice some of this up thin. Another thing that tacos are, is that tacos are done with grilled meats, not minced. That minced meat, you, you won't find that in Mexico. So it just won't. What does a Mexican do when confronted with minced meat on a taco? They know they're not in Mexico. Uh huh. Now, we have the tortilla here. I'm gonna put some little bit of bean on here. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of grilled chicken right here in the center. Let's put in a little bit of pico de gallo. That's but lovely. It, really, that is the essence of a taco right there. That's beautiful. Just hold it up like okay, that. Okay, hold it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That, that is really it? good. That taste That it? is really, really good. Tell me the rules of what's in a quesadilla and what's not in a quesadilla. Cheese, anything else you want. The cheese should be low fat, sort of low moisture cheese. Oh, so low fat, know. thank you. And we're gonna do one with black bean mm -hmm. and one with grilled mushrooms that have been sliced. They go on the grill, uh -huh. flip it over. Uh -huh. See how it starts getting a little golden yeah. there? We can choose whether we want them straight up or stirred or on the rocks or, in other words, <laughs> what I mean is, you can open the quesadilla and you can add a little bit of tomatillo. Or say you got a little bit of guacamole on the side and you're gonna put a little bit of guac in here. Just a pinch. Mmm. Oh, yama. Mmm, mmm. What's a Mexican word you'd use to describe this? Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Delicioso. Burritos need a flour tortilla, all right? And you mark them up just a bit. See the markings? Mm -hmm. It's called marking the tortilla. See when it starts to puff up like that? Uh huh. That's called the belly, la panza. What the belly? It? We're gonna put some cheese on here. Okay. And we're just gonna put in a nice little line of beans here. Now we're gonna take in and throw a little bit of rice. We're gonna put some meat in here with the onions, right? Wow. Now we're putting a salsa in. Now notice that there's a space on both sides. We need that there because we have to wrap this thing. And then you go like this. Oh, my heavens. That's wow. That's a burrito. Wow. Now it goes on the grill. Ah. With a fold down because that'll seal it. Mm -hmm. The cheese makes it sort of retain the shape, melts into it, it just sort of steams towards the center. Yummy. And then this is what you see in the middle. Oh. See? Yum. Looks great. Shall we try it? Oh, toasty. Yummy. Absolutely. Ah. That's really, really, really good. Isn't that fun? I love it. When you do it like that, you are dissolved. Yvonne de Kaiser says there's nothing more sensuous than a thick, velvety cup of Mexican hot chocolate made with age-old equipment. We have this, it's called molinillo, mm. and this is uh, used to make it frothy. You move it around, ah. and you can see the things rolling. Wow. This is the chocolate. It uh -huh. comes already like this. Uh -huh. mm. We need one liter of milk for one of these. Look at this. This is Mexican hot chocolate. We have to leave it to boil, uh -huh. and then we start to do this. The chocolate is nearly all dissolved. Uh -huh. See? Wow. Salud. Salud. Mmm. Mm. Yummy, no? That is really good. Mmm. <laughs> On our next safari, the hidden delights of Turkish food, colourful dips and salads, meat cooked over charcoal and beautiful sweets. Is Mexican food an aphrodisiac? Yes, absolutely. Really? Every time I have it. Really? Yes. <laughs> Do you have it often? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Are we talking about the food? Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> Lots of Mexican food. Really? Yeah. What's it do? Chilies hit your blood? It heats the body. And you know what's interesting? In Mexico, when you're horny, they say you're hot. <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> Where are we going now? I don't know. I don't know. But that's what they say. <laughs>